But that that quote uh, mentions imagined illness. Is this a different book if the cause is psychological rather than physiological? It's maybe not a different book, but it perhaps is a different way. It would be a different way for him to see his illness. I mean, it's very important for him in the early pages to find out whether or not it's a mental or a physical disease, as I think it is for many people when they're suffering from something that falls through the medical cracks. But ultimately, um, I don't think it matters to him. I mean, it's something that takes his life over, and whether or not it's a it's you know caused at, a, at an organic level or some kind of mental psychosis, it doesn't it doesn't matter in the end. When you meet readers of the book, do they ask you what, what uh, to diagnose him? I have been asked that, but I think what is most important is that this book be read as a book about a disease and not necessarily about a book that answers what causes disease uh, or as an allegory as a, or as a metaphor. I think you know you can sort of look and, and at the end of the book m- make guesses at what it might be a metaphor for, but it is first and foremost a very flesh and blood story about a man who is suffering from something that he simply cannot get a diagnosis of and certainly not a cure for. The novel starts dark with a description of the cruelest winter, and you say that cold was the mother of invention, a vengeful mother whose lessons were delivered at the end of uh, a, a, lash. a lash, a, mm-hmm. a whip lash, right? Yeah. Uh, now, is that a thematic statement do you, that you're making there? Well, I was const- I was doing my best to construct a fictional world uh, that uh, used weather in a, a very severe way because he is exposed to the elements when he th- is walking. Uh, you know, he's walking outdoors, and at a certain point, uh, about three fourths of the way through the mo- of the novel, he is never to return indoors again. And so, the fictional world imposes um, uh, severe elements upon him. It makes his trial a little harder, I think. Although uh, some people see suffering as ennobling. I, th- I think he arrives at that point. Um, I- it's a difficult task for anyone because it doesn't just happen. You know, you don't just get sick and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm noble now, thank God. I think that it's a process, and that process, uh, you have to actually uh, fall many rungs below noble before you can achieve a certain uh, peace with it and rise to the occasion. And I think that is precisely the the route that he takes. My guest is Joshua Ferris, whose latest novel, his second novel, is The Unnamed. It's published by the Reagan Arthur imprint at Little Brown, the new imprint there, uh, named after Reagan Arthur. Uh, the unnamed disease or condition that manifests at the beginning of the book is a recurrence. Hadn't you originally started the book with Tim experiencing it for the first time and trying to figure it out? That's right. I ha- had this uh, image in my mind of a man who was, you know, doing well. Uh, he was a lawyer, and I thought it would be interesting to sort of rip him from the urinal and have him uh, force him to buckle up while in the hallway of his law firm. And I, I just sort of liked the, uh, the, the image of that because, you know, men tend to do that <laughs> even unthinkingly. It's sort of a trope at work where you're walking down the hallway and find somebody doing something they probably should have finished up in the bathroom. But he was doing it without any uh, freedom of his, of his own will. I mean, he had to do it because he was being forced to walk. It didn't work. It was the wrong place to start the novel. So I started it later on when he's the, the disease has recurred and everybody sort of goes into emergency mode. And slowly the reader gets the sense of, of exactly what the contours of the disease are.